London Heathrow Airport, one of the busiest in the world. Thousands of flights take off and land each day. On the morning of May 24, 2013, everything seemed routine on British Airways Flight 762. Passengers were relaxed, the weather was perfect, and the flight was on course for Oslo, Norway. But out of nowhere, things took a terrifying turn. A loud explosion shook the plane. The cabin was filled with chaos as the crew and passengers tried to make sense of what had just happened. Nobody knew for sure, but one thing was certain. Something was seriously wrong. Speedbird 2276, heavy fire services are on the way. In a world where every second counts, this crew had to make decisions that could either save hundreds of lives or lead to tragedy. What happened next was a race against time. Stay tuned to find out. This is the story of British Airways Flight 762. On May 24, 2013, British Airways Flight 762 was set to begin its first flight of the day. The destination, Oslo, Norway, a relatively short flight of just under two hours. They would be taking an 11-year-old Airbus A319. It was a reliable and trusted aircraft, was ready to take off from Heathrow Airport with 75 passengers and five crew members aboard, prepared for a smooth journey. Behind the controls were two experienced pilots. The captain was a seasoned aviator with over 12,500 flight hours, 6,600 of which were on the aircraft Airbus, and the first officer, a 33-year-old co-pilot with 5,400 flight hours in total, including 4,100 on the A320. The captain had been with British Airways for 11 years and had worked his way up from an engineering apprentice, while the first officer had joined the airline in 2006, bringing with him extensive knowledge of the aircraft. The crew conducted their pre-flight checks. The captain reviewed the aircraft's technical log and the co-pilot went through the standard walk-around inspection. Everything appeared normal. There were no visible issues or abnormalities. The clock was ticking, and as the aircraft lined up on runway 27 left for takeoff, everything appeared to be routine. Little did they know that in just moments, their calm, calculated flight would turn into a desperate race for survival. The aircraft began its takeoff from Heathrow Airport under near-perfect conditions. The captain and first officer set the course for Oslo, expecting a routine journey ahead. For the passengers aboard, there was nothing out of the ordinary. Most were quietly settling into their seats, glancing at the safety pamphlet or gazing out of the windows as the aircraft gathered speed. The familiar sensation of liftoff was expected, a smooth rise into the sky. However, for those sitting near the wings, the experience was not as peaceful. They started to notice something strange. At first, they couldn't make sense of it. Was it turbulence? Was something wrong? The answer was much worse. As British Airways Flight 762 roared down the runway and lifted into the sky, everything seemed normal. But just moments after takeoff, things began to spiral into danger. Pilots in another aircraft, positioned on the same runway 27 left, noticed something alarming. Debris was scattered across the runway. They quickly radioed air traffic control, concerned that there could be a potential hazard ahead. The crew of Flight 762 was unaware of the situation unfolding behind them. Meanwhile, back in the cockpit, everything seemed fine. The aircraft had reached its acceleration altitude and was climbing steadily. But in reality, the unsecured fan cowl doors on both engines had been ripped off during the climb. As the force of the wind tore at the unsecured doors, debris was sent flying into the air. What no one in the cockpit knew was that some of that debris had struck the plane. Pieces of the fan cowl doors punctured the fuel metering units, causing a fuel leak in the right engine. For the crew, it was just another climb in what seemed like a normal flight, but the reality was much worse. Fuel was leaking from the engine, and an engine fire was now a real threat. Yet the crew remained unaware. Passengers seated near the wings pressed their call buttons, trying to get the attention of the flight attendants. Their anxiety grew as they looked out the windows and saw the flapping fan cowl doors. Despite their concern, the cabin crew and flight deck were still operating under the assumption that the flight was proceeding normally. Once the autopilot was engaged at 1,100 feet, a series of warning messages began flashing on the cockpit display. 
The first officer watched as the system's thrust calculations, which typically helped guide the engine power, failed. The display informed them that it could no longer calculate the engine thrust in the usual way. The aircraft's computers would now have to revert to a more rudimentary system N1 mode, which measures engine thrust based on engine speed rather than power output. The pilots were still able to maintain control of the aircraft, but the situation was beginning to slip out of their grasp. At this stage, they were unaware that the engine cowlings had detached during takeoff, causing severe damage to critical engine components, including vital tubing and sensors. Meanwhile, the exposed engine components were being subjected to harsh external forces at high speeds. The damage to critical systems began to escalate, but it wasn't immediately apparent to the crew. The cockpit was still under control, but the growing list of technical issues was an ominous sign of the trouble ahead. The flight attendants, visibly worried but trying to maintain professionalism, quickly attempted to reassure passengers. Meanwhile, the pilots remained focused on reaching a safe altitude. They would have to rely on their training to handle the escalating problems. As the flight proceeded to a cruising altitude of approximately 6,000 feet, the cockpit was flooded with additional warnings. The central display, known as the ECAM, Electronic Centralized Aircraft Monitoring, suddenly lit up with a string of critical alerts. The first was a yellow hydraulic system pressure low warning. Hydraulic systems are vital for controlling key aspects of the aircraft, including flight surfaces such as spoilers, flaps, and rudders. The yellow hydraulic system is particularly crucial for the control of the aircraft's airspeed and wing surfaces. This was not a minor glitch. Losing hydraulic power in any of these systems could lead to disastrous consequences, especially if the remaining backup systems failed. The pilots immediately understood that this was no longer just a minor technical issue. It was a serious problem that required immediate attention. The pilots had to return to the airport immediately to prevent the two remaining hydraulic systems from leaking through the same hole. The captain had to isolate them from the damaged system. To do this, he turned off the power transfer unit, PTU, on the overhead panel. For now, the other hydraulic systems appeared to be safe, staying at their normal pressure of 3,000 PSI. Now, with the aircraft's conditions somewhat stable and level at 6,000 feet, the pilots had a chance to review their situation. What was the status of the aircraft? What wasn't working? And what was? To make matters worse, just moments after the hydraulic issue, a new message flashed across the ECAM screen. Fuel imbalance detected. The system indicated that the right wing tank had significantly less fuel than the left by more than 1,500 kilograms, and the imbalance was growing. Before we continue, if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing to stay updated on more interesting aviation stories. With each passing minute, the emergency conditions aboard Flight 762 became more out of control. The real kicker came when the pilots received another urgent message. Fuel leak detected. This was no longer an issue of just an imbalance. The plane was actually losing fuel at an alarming rate. The right side fuel tank had dropped 120 kilograms in just two minutes. At this point, the pilots understood the severity of the situation. They were losing fuel faster than they could burn it, and the situation was deteriorating quickly. At the same time, the first officer had noticed an unsettling change in the engine's performance. The right engine, which had been showing signs of failure from the very beginning, was now making spitting sounds. The remaining fuel was insufficient to keep the engine running efficiently, and the possibility of a complete engine failure seemed inevitable. The aircraft's fuel system was no longer reliable enough to maintain proper engine power. Desperate for a solution, the captain called for the aircraft to return to Heathrow, where they could attempt an emergency landing. The flight crew had already begun considering the worst-case scenario, an emergency ditching or crash landing in the event of complete engine failure. But even that plan seemed flawed. The hydraulic system was already compromised, and now the crew had to deal with a burning engine. The flight attendants were beginning to sense the severity of the emergency. In the cabin, the mood shifted rapidly as passengers began to feel the unsettling vibrations coming from the right side of the aircraft. A few began to panic, some trying to peer out the windows to see what was happening, others whispering nervously to each other. The flight attendants kept moving through the aisles, offering calming reassurances, but their own faces betrayed the anxiety they felt. Back in the cockpit, the first officer continued to monitor the flight's deteriorating fuel situation, and the captain kept his eyes fixed on the instruments. Time was running out, and it was now clear that a return to Heathrow wasn't just a precaution. 
It was their only option. The aircraft was barely being controlled, and the flight crew was well aware that one mistake could send them spiraling out of control. Every second counted. The captain radioed air traffic control again, requesting priority clearance for an immediate return. It wasn't a question of if they would make it back, but whether they could land safely in the conditions they were facing. The situation took an even darker turn when the first officer noticed the right engine was now spewing fuel at an alarming rate of 120 kilograms per minute. The pilots realized they didn't have much time before the engine would be completely out of fuel or worse, a potential fire. The captain informed air traffic control of the fuel leak and instructed them to clear a path for an emergency landing on runway 27 right. The flight attendants were briefed on the situation and began preparing the passengers for an emergency landing. The flight crew was working as quickly as possible, their minds racing through checklists, decisions, and calculations. As they neared the airport, the situation grew even more critical. The first officer had calculated that over 100 kilograms of fuel had leaked in just two minutes and 20 seconds. The remaining fuel was rapidly depleting, with the right wing tank almost empty. Then, as they were lined up for final approach, disaster struck. A loud bang shook the aircraft, and the right engine began to roll back. The engine had now failed, and to make matters worse, a fire warning went off. The fuel that had been pouring from the engine had ignited. The captain immediately acted, shutting down the right engine. He pulled the thrust lever back to idle and discharged one of the aircraft's fire extinguishers into the engine. Still, the fire warning didn't stop, and the captain pressed the button for the second fire extinguisher. He declared a mayday to air traffic control, telling them they were attempting to land but might need to go around for another attempt. The clock was ticking. There was no time for another attempt. They had to land now. As the aircraft descended to 500 feet, the captain took over control, instructing the first officer to handle the thrust levers while he focused on guiding the aircraft toward the runway. Passengers, unaware of the severity of the situation, could see the runway approaching rapidly. Fire engines and ambulances were lined up, ready to respond to a potential crash landing. The plane touched down with a jolt, its speed dropping quickly. The captain, using all his experience, brought the aircraft under control. But the brakes burst one of the tires, and the wing spoilers failed to deploy properly due to the damaged hydraulic system. However, the aircraft continued to slow as the captain turned the plane to the right, positioning the flaming engine downwind, away from the cabin. The fire crew was already racing toward them, assessing the situation as the captain ordered an evacuation. Within two minutes, all 75 passengers had safely evacuated the aircraft. Thanks to the prompt and precise actions of the crew, no lives were lost. But the mystery of what had caused this catastrophic chain of events was just beginning to unravel. Before we continue, if you haven't subscribed yet, take a moment to do so. This investigation will reveal shocking details that you won't want to miss. The investigation into the incident revealed several critical findings related to the malfunctioning of the aircraft's fan cowl doors, which ultimately contributed to the unfolding emergency. The process was methodical, focusing on identifying the core causes and understanding the contributing elements that increased the severity of the situation. The investigation first identified that the technicians responsible for servicing the aircraft's integrated drive generators IDGs did not adhere to the appropriate aircraft maintenance manual AMM procedures. This failure resulted in the fan cowl doors being left in an unlatched and unsafe condition following overnight maintenance. The latching mechanism, which is vital to ensure the secure closure of the engine nacelles, was not checked or properly fastened. This oversight created an immediate risk for the integrity of the aircraft upon takeoff, as unlatched fan cowl doors can cause serious drag and lead to engine failure if not addressed. Both the pre-departure walk-around inspections carried out by the pushback tug driver and the co-pilot failed to identify that the fan cowl doors on both engines were unlatched. The inspection processes are designed to catch any obvious mechanical issues, but in this case, the unlatched fan cowl doors went unnoticed. This oversight directly contributed to the failure to detect the maintenance error prior to departure, leaving the crew unaware of the critical issue. The design of the fan cowl door latching system played a significant role in allowing the unlatched doors to go undetected. The latches are positioned at the bottom of the engine nacelle, close to the ground. This design greatly increased the likelihood that unfastened latches would not be visible during the pre-departure inspections, particularly when viewed from the ground. The location of the latches required specific attention to detail, 
but it was often obscured by the aircraft's structure and close proximity to the ground, making it difficult to spot during routine checks. Another key contributory factor was the absence of a high-visibility paint finish on the latch handles. High-visibility markings are essential in ensuring that key components are easily visible and identifiable, especially during quick inspections before departure. The lack of such markings on the latch handles reduced the conspicuity of the unfastened latches, which further contributed to the oversight during the pre-departure checks. Without clear markings, it was difficult for both the technicians and inspectors to notice when the fan cowl doors were not securely latched. The investigation also found that the technicians had made a critical decision that compounded the problem. They engaged the latch handle hooks, which prevented the latch handles from hanging down beneath the fan cowl doors as they were intended. This action further reduced the visibility of the unfastened latches. When the latch handles were not allowed to drop into their proper position, it made it even harder for both the crew and ground personnel to detect the issue as the handles were less accessible and less likely to be noticed. The story of British Airways Flight 762 shows just how quickly things can go wrong, even when everything seems fine at first. A simple mistake led to one of the most dangerous situations an airplane can face, but thanks to quick thinking and calm under pressure, all passengers and crew made it out alive. If this story left you with more questions about aviation safety, hit the like button and share it with others who might not know the full picture. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.